Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to an XP farm for console Xbox which isn't quite as fast as the PC one but it's still very very fast for you to level up in but before we get into it hit the like button subscribe comment all of that fun stuff now don't look overwhelmed by this when you first start this you are literally just going to have four of these boxes four of those boxes that attach to the extractors that you need and i'll show you that as well so this is just the eventual place you will get to and this is a very natural occurring thing because all the things that you get from the extractor that goes into these four boxes you'll create adaptive frames to get xp and then you'll use those adaptive frames with the minerals that you have to create more storage boxes so eventually you'll be at this place here and i'll discuss why you need this many boxes in a little while but let's get into it i'm going to try and break it down as much as possible if your industrial workbench gets obstructed you have to save the game quit out of it load it back up and then get back into the game and essentially the cycle will end up being you just hold right on your d-pad you press a to craft and as it's going up you tap the rb button to get up quicker and then you create that gives you 108 xp if you've been sleeping and you have the pots on to get you an extra two percent you can get up to i think 115 maybe so it's a little bit quicker, but you'll get enough XP boost off the sleep. And essentially, you just keep doing this over and over and over again. You can see how quickly that bar is raising up. For Xbox, that's pretty good. For PC, you can just press the mouse button on the 99 and then press the enter button and just keep doing it over and over and over again. And it's several times faster. I reckon you could probably get about 20 levels on this in about an hour. Maybe more if you're really efficient about it. I haven't tested it myself, but just from... The experience of just you know going up one level or two it just feels like you probably get about 20 levels in an hour it's a little bit tiring on the hands and it's also can damage your controller if you're pressing it too hard so you gotta, you gotta be you gotta be careful about that there are people saying you can change your keybinds you can do this that and the other for me that's just way too complex and complicated for something so small i'm not going to be using this to get to level 5000 I just want to try some of the other perks that I haven't got yet. So I'm going to be using this probably for about 30 levels just so I can, you know, buy some of the other things that I want to buy. You will get loads of adaptive frames. And if you're not using them to build storages anymore, I just usually drop them into a corner over here. And then eventually I'm going to pick these all up, take them over to my starship and jettison them out. So you'll delete them essentially. And I will say with this method, you do not need an outpost building. You do not need your starship anywhere close by. I just did this because I've it just looked better to me instead of just having an industrial workbench and a bed just sitting out there in the open. Also, this planet can have frostbite rain. So you kind of want to try and avoid that if you can. So yeah, I made a little outpost room. But we're going to talk about the materials you actually need and where to get them from. Okay, for the shopping, we're going to need to head back to New Atlantis. We're going to go to Alpha Centauri and on to Jemison and get to where we need to get to. And you want to fly to the one that just says New Atlantis because that's the spaceport and that's the closest to the shop that we are going to get to. So once you leave your ship and you run straight forward, you want to turn left and we're heading to the Mercantile Shop. Now here is where you're going to get all of the things that you need. And on screen right now, I will show you what you need bare minimum materials if you already have some of these things great if not come and see this lady here and she will sell them to you you can also do the out of bounds glitch to get to the chest to steal it if you want but that's just going to take so much longer so for everything here it's under resources we have the adaptive frames there's usually only four of them now to get the bare minimum which i think was 24 it's going to take a while of waiting and trying to get them so hopefully you either have some of these already you can steal them from ships you can steal them from salvage salvage yards just just to make things a bit quicker there's also the one of a kind salvage on the planet you can search that up and that will help you get these quicker too then you need aluminium 118 of them bare minimum i believe if i remember rightly um, we need iron and beryllium so beryllium i think you'll get pretty quickly you only need 20 so you'll have that right there ready to go you need copper, which I think was about 30. So a couple of runs and you'll have enough copper. We have iron, 26 at a time. And I think you need like 90, 92, something like that. And we need tungsten, which is also sold here. You don't need very many of these. You'll probably get this done in one run. Now you could get some fiber as well. Fiber will allow you to build a bed. So you only need like two of them. So, you know, just if there are here, I think they are here. Yeah, you can just grab a couple of them. And then if you don't have enough of those materials yet and you need to get some more, you just want to run outside, sit at one of these chairs and wait for 24 hours and then go back into her inventory and they would have been refilled. 
Now, if you're starting to get overflown, over encumbered, you can press your pause button, go down to your ship, press the cargo hold button, press LB to get to your inventory, go down to resources, and then store them in your cargo hold, like so. I will say this, just be careful and take some extra materials just in case you want to make a bigger farm off the bat, or I've made some calculation errors, I don't think I have, but take, I don't know, 5 to 10 to 20 more of each one if that's what you want to do. And let's go and show you how to actually find this area. So this is the most pain in the ass bit because you need to find an area on a planet that has iron and aluminium close enough to each other to be able to farm it. And as much as people online say it's easy to find, trust me it isn't. So the place that you want to go to, for me anyway, and I found the easiest to find was Nicola. And I searched multiple planets and found it almost impossible to find them together. This planet, it took me 15 minutes to maybe a bit more 20 minutes to find one specific area with a very small amount of aluminium in the same place as iron you want to head over to nicola one and the way you find these areas is to just scan it the planet and you will see that it shows up in like patches of color so iron is obviously brown and then aluminium is this gray color you need to find these in within close proximity to each other now for me mine was looking like this a little tiny area where they just kind of clashed now i don't think going for like one this small is going to work because you're just going to get overpowered by iron so you need to kind of find an area that is pretty much even or more slightly more of one than the other it's extremely difficult and you just got to keep going until you can find a specific area so i'm going to try this here no because there's water there i don't want to get water as well so it's just about finding the right place. Let me zoom out a little bit so I can see. It's it's so just complex. And I think if you have a better scan, you can see this even better. I'm thinking about going here because this looks very similar to the one that I already had at. So you just want to place your marker somewhere close to both of them. I don't think it has to be bang on the line or something. And then you're going to land there. And I'm going to show you what to do, but I'm not going to show you how to ha me actually finding it on this one because it could take me 20 minutes. So when you get here, you want to pull out your outpost. So press your LB button, bring out your outpost thing. Now, as you can see in the top left hand corner, it tells me there that I can see iron, tantalum and water in this vicinity. Now, the further away you look is where it's detecting your materials. So you want to run around essentially as far as you can away from yourself place in this outpost and then as you run it should change ahead of you it's gonna be your quickest way to kind of find this stuff you can go any which way direction you want i'm gonna just gonna to get to a point hopefully where it changes so you can see it actually changing maybe we get lucky i don't know and it's just about looking around and trying to find this specific place where iron and aluminium might just be close enough to each other to actually get so now it's just changed and i've got tantalum as well so it's, it literally is just about running around and hoping to God that you find, oh God, I'm lagging, and hoping to God that you find iron and aluminium next to each other. Like I said, on the planet that I did it, well, on this planet and the other section, it took me like 15 to 20 minutes to actually find it. Um, it can be very frustrating, very annoying. Iron and water this way. The further away you look again is like where it will, where it will detect the materials. And yeah, that's all you got to do. Like, you just got to run around and hope that you find iron and aluminium together. I'm not going to sit here like everyone else says and said that it's easy and it's quick and it's fast and you're definitely going to find it because it is incredibly frustrating. But you will eventually find it and I'm lagging again. And when and when you find it, it's just a, the biggest, it was the biggest moment of my life, actually, to be fair. I was so happy. <laughs> um, but yeah, you you will hopefully eventually find it and if you if you are really struggling in one area just try and land at a different part on the planet and see if you know those interconnecting minerals will show up on that landing zone on that instance when you drop it down i just got some frostbite but let's go back to the outpost and i'll talk about specific things that you need to do so you can see on my footage i am here currently hitting the aluminium iron border and i was so happy at this point to get it so you just want to get your like little outpost thingy and put it in that section 
So as you place it down, it will automatically put you onto the extractors and you obviously want aluminium and iron extractors. This was the first time I ever built an outpost, by the way. So every time I get a tip, it's crazy. So the aluminium now that I'm selecting and flying it around, I'm looking for the patch of area where aluminium exists. And as you can see, it's right here. It shows you. So each extractor that you place has like a round circle around it, like a radius. So you want to make sure your extractors aren't massively overlapping each other. So I kind of tried to put them at like a 12, 6, 9 clock face type thing. Enough away from each other where I can put them. And you only really need four. If you get a bigger space, you know, you can put it in. So like iron here, I put five in because I've got a way more iron here too. So this is essentially what you need to do. Put down four to five of each extractor in the areas of the highlighted places and then you're going to build boxes for each specific side so you're going to put four storage boxes on the side of the iron and four storage boxes on the side of the aluminium but before we get into storage boxes we need some power to power these mining of the minerals so each extractor you put down costs you five power so you need to create five power to have them running you're placing down essentially eight minimum of extractors which is you need 40 power the solar arrays that you put down give you four power, so you need to put down 10 solar arrays. You can go over if you want, that's totally up to you. I don't think it has any kind of benefit, but I just put down some wind turbines later on as well just to throw some extra power on. But for the bare minimum, you just need to make sure that your needed power is, I mean, your total power, sorry, is more or the same as your needed power. Solar arrays don't need to be connected to anything. They just need to be placed down. I don't think they need to be nearby in the same vicinity. You just need to place them in the area. I just put them between the two sets of extractors because it just, it just kind of makes sense. Place down your industrial workbench and your bed next to each other, preferably next to the outpost um, where you place it down in the first place to create the outpost. Because every time you spawn in, if you're not going to use your ship and land it on a ship landing, you will spawn at the outpost um, thing that you place. I don't know what to call it. Beacon, let's say beacon. And then you'll be right next to your industrial bench and your bed. Every time you do a cycle of this, you'll sleep for 24 hours and then go on your industrial bench. You'll get your XP boost. So it's good to have a bed there too. So right now you can see me putting down my boxes and they're a little bit hard with the, the snapping doesn't really kind of work as well as you want it to because you'll try and pull it to the side and then it'll just pop up on top. Essentially, you just want four boxes next to each other in a line if you can, or just four boxes in general. I accidentally put down five, but I had a few extra materials, so it didn't matter. You wanna have one to the side of the iron, one to the side of the aluminium, set up pretty much like this. Now, the next thing you need to do is connect the extractors to those boxes. So you go into your build menu and you run over to the extractors. And then on each extractor, you want to press the right trigger and you'll get like a little dotted red line that's connected now. And you take it to any one of the boxes and you connect it to it. All the extractors should be connected to the same box. So essentially what you're going to do is build a train of storage. So all the extractors are connected to one box and then you're going to connect that box to every other box in its, in its train cycle, let's say. And then all your minerals will just stack up in the first box until it fills then the second box, then the third box, then the fourth box, and it'll just keep filling in that way. Once you've connected all the extractors to the one box, you want to run over to the boxes and do the same thing. So you press right trigger on the box, aim at another box and press the confirm button. This will show you in game as the highlighted boxes will vanish. So then when you go to the next box, it will only show, it will show less highlighted ones. Once none of the boxes are highlighted, that means they're all connected. So just go in a straight line, right left to right or, or whatever's easier for you and connect one box to the next box and then connect that box to the next box and then connect that box to the next box and so on and so forth and now you're pretty much ready to go all the iron and aluminium you are going to be farming will be used to create adaptive frames which will give you the xp that you need to level up but also those adaptive frames and the iron and aluminium will be used to create more storage boxes you place down those storage boxes on the ones you already have, connect them all up the same that way you have, and then you'll have a higher capacity of minerals given to you for you to create the adaptive frames, and you won't have to sleep as often, which is where you lose a lot of time near the start. But essentially what you're going to do is use up all the materials you have to create the adaptive frames, create storage boxes. Once you run out and you've got nothing left, you go to the bed and you sleep for 24 hours. Now on this planet, it works roughly about for every hour you sleep, the universal time goes forward about 12 hours. 
So if you sleep for 24 hours, you're actually sleeping for like 260 hours, which would give the minerals, the mineral farming a lot of time, 260 hours worth to be able to stack up over a thousand of each mineral. Then you create the adaptive frames again, create more storage boxes if you want to. If you don't, drop them on the floor or use your starship to jettison them out if you don't want to create a mess. You'll get your XP, you'll level up, you run out of materials, you then go to sleep and do it again. Eventually you'll get to a place like my one where there's a lot of boxes, a lot of storage boxes where a 24 hour sleep is barely filling up even a quarter of what you're doing, probably even less. Then you want to fly to Venus in, at this point. If you want to just go all out, just creating adaptive frames without sleeping or anything, you need to head over to Venus, which is in the Sol district. Once you land on Venus and you're in your ship, you just want to stand up. You don't want to leave the ship. You just want to stand up and go find a chair and sit in it for however long you want. I roughly go about 10 hours. It's less weight. And I think, a, you know, a little bit less travel time than sleeping in the bed on the main planet for 24 hours. But essentially what will happen is, is Venus works at a rate of 100 hours to one. So you sleep for 10 hours, that's a thousand hours in game. And all that 1000 hours, your mining is working and working and working, stacking up into those boxes that you've created. So you fly back to your outpost and then you can just create adaptive frames for ages without having to sleep whatsoever and then essentially you've got a little bit more of an efficient farm now it is a little bit overwhelming it took me about two hours to get it all set up and running properly but it's definitely worth it if you want to level up and get a few extra points in your skill trees and, and unlock some new perks that you want to try out because leveling in this game does take a, a good while unless you're killing very high level enemies it does take a good while and this is just a very easy passive efficient way to do it especially like if you're watching something on tv you can just sit there doing it over and over again while you're watching the thing that you're watching i watched a whole live stream yesterday and i went up like 10 ranks just so i could get some extra skill points in some things and leveling up doesn't doesn't really affect anything in the game because the higher level enemies and the elite enemies they kind of level with you so you're still going to find a challenge you're still going to you know run into ships and dog fights with higher level people but essentially you just get a few more skill points to enjoy the game with so i really hope that helped you out if you have any questions, leave the comments down below. I'll be checking regularly, trying to explain even better than hopefully I have already any kind of qualms or problems that you might have, and we'll try and sort them out. So it is very complex and it is overwhelming, but once you start getting into it and you start figuring it out, like by doing it, it'll become second nature. It'll become easy. So again, hit the like button if that helped. Subscribe if you're new around here and leave a comment and all that fun YouTube stuff. So yeah, thank you for watching. I've been easy now. You guys have been awesome.